Good day everyone. In this video, I will be discussing the essential concepts to consider when designing a system, particularly service systems. So I am Maria Janeline Vidala Merced, the presenter of this lecture. And now let's have what is design thinking. When we define it literally, we would say it's about thinking of ways to design something. That is correct, yet in IT and other fields, those ways of thinking on how to design are divided into deeper definitions, such as design thinking is a solution-based approach when coping up with a problem. For instance, how will you develop or engineer a software if you don't think of ways or designs that could solve your problem? How will you start the development if you don't have any plan or basis? Design thinking means design processing, wherein this process should enable us to develop a service system that could solve a particular problem, either simple or complex ones. So together with our first definition, design thinking is gathering problems and planning processes or solutions to solve that problem. Next, design thinking also means digging deeper into the design. So once you already had your plan, that means you can think or design ways that could make your plan broader until you reach the fourth definition, which is iterative prototyping. Design thinking reflects iterative prototyping in the sense that after all of your plans, development, and implementations, there will be a time that you should be reviewing your design and redesign it for better solutions. Design thinking is interdisciplinary because we must plan our design considering all aspects that have something to do with our main target, the user, and the development. With the definitions I've shared earlier, design thinking is interdisciplinary because designing doesn't focus on one perception or perspective. You should go far or more profound in, if you want to develop an effective solution such as service systems to satisfy a customer. For example, if you want to know how the manual process goes, you should not just observe. It would help if you talk to people and even experience doing that manual process to develop a good plan. Design thinking is divergent because as you take note of your information gatherings, more ideas come up and more iteration will be done. For example, if you have known that your target user are oldies or senior citizens, you would be thinking of ways to design the interface of your system physically and of course its software design. Design thinking is convergent because it leads us to a linear path to form a conclusion or a system design. Design thinking is immersive in the sense that aside from your ideas, the ideas of your teammates will also be summed up to be able to develop a better understanding of your plan and better development of your system. So I would also like to emphasize the relations of humans to computers since I am discussing design thinking in the IT field. It is important to involve this study when designing software because as a developer, we should not design and develop only based on what we want and what we know is right. We should always consider our target users. They are why we want to develop something useful for the community. And because they will be our end user, we should prioritize knowing them 
and how they relate to computers and trending technologies. First, we must study the nature of our users. How many of them will use our system? Will it be for one person only? Will there be many users whom we could say the service systems will be for public users? And if for public users, okay, what aspects or what specs of our computers should be deployed? Are your users literate enough to use your design technology? Shall we consider if our users are good enough to perform computing as a developer? Do we also need to consider our users' capabilities such as is it right for us to develop a system that needs voice features if our users are deaf or mute? When we're done answering all of those questions, do you have plans on iterating your design? Regarding computers, if our users will be public citizens and our system plan includes confidential things like money, should it be implemented in a place with no neighbor? Is it okay not to include authentication algorithms? If so, should it be good only to integrate one-way authentication? If our end users will then be the public, would it be better to deploy the service system on the cloud? These computing capabilities should also be considered when designing to know how our service system can reach our users. We should go back to how we observed our users in terms of interactivity. Are they good enough to use computers and use standard specs? Or is there someone with disabilities that our system should be designed with artificial intelligence to be more helpful? So those questions about human-computer interaction could be or could also be a perfect foundation to consider when it comes to design thinking. And now let's talk about design stages. Okay, so what will be our guide to achieve the best plan for our system design? Okay, so we have four main or five main stages. And number one here is research. Okay, so this is the first step of every project. We should research for some needed information for us to have a solution to what? To problems, okay, that our target users experience. Was it locally or globally experienced? What were the commonalities when it is experienced locally and globally. Is it that complex? Can we do it? Okay. So all aspects of research came from a problem basis. We need to seek or search for the problems for us to come up with objectives. A primary objective, which is to provide a solution to the problems of our target users. So there are ways to conduct research, but that will be discussed as we go further. In this stage, we have to consider that we want to answer the whys and the problems that our users are experiencing. And now let's have the second stage, which is ideation. In this stage, we need to consider the perspectives of each stakeholder. Okay, our users and other factors. In terms of the human perspective, as I have discussed from the HCI topic, we need to consider the things in our target users' minds. So what would they like to systematize? What are their objectives or recommendations in their work nature? We need to get the answers to these questions because this will be based on what they need okay economic perspective first is our target audience our target users good enough to pay us for the service 
Will they consider maintenance needs primarily if the design is structured to be on the cloud? So they would need to provide payment for cloud services. Or will our plan give that business organization or company an assurance to be given a service system that will let them see the worth of everything? From a technological perspective, we also need to consider if our design is possible to deploy, such in a case where we designed the system to be in a grid computing setup. Is that target organization able to buy computer sets for each office to be able to get connected to the server? Environmental perspective pictures the ability of the target company to have enough resources for the designed system to achieve its availability to perform its desired functions. So the ideation stage would mean extracting the abilities of our target companies to support our design before the development. So removing some filters might be performed to seek what we should work on. Prototyping, prototyping okay, means after all the research on why problem exists and how we would develop solutions to them, after knowing the perspectives in different aspects of idea, ideation stage, we may now proceed to the prototyping stage where we will plot our summed up ideas to develop a system workflow and its design. So in this stage, we will be using our practical skills in prototyping the system, okay? And use our creative skills to add up more creation. There will always be a failure experiences in this stage as we are about to develop a system that can transpose a working or functional system. So it is okay to experience it, the failures, as long as we can see a linear path to achieve the desired outcome. Okay. So after prototyping and development, we may now test the system's capabilities. So the first phase of testing actually happens during the development. We always try its features as we go further. And as a team, there will always be a master to test the system, whether it performs well or not yet. Okay. And after the first phase of testing, the team may now be able to implement the system for user testing where we provide the first version of the system to our actual users. So during this stage, observations should take place. Will our users be able to understand all the features with one glance? Is it easy to understand? Were they able to use the system properly and achieve the team's goals? With this, we should have a performance matrix and check whether the functionality of our design is good or does it need some improvement. Okay? So sometimes we need to let the users use the system without informing them what it does for us to be able to identify if it's generally informative and easy to use. But for formality, we must at least give manuals or train some personnel on how to use it properly and introduce the scopes and limitations of our system so they would know what to expect from its features. Okay, and now we know the general purposes of those stages. Let's have a more comprehensive view of each process as additional knowledge. So how are we going to emphasize as we do our research methods? First, during the observation method, we should be focusing on our target users. Who are they? In a sense that how do they behave 
as they do their work? What were their capabilities when doing those works? Secondly, we have to have a conversation with them. We have to know their insights, like their work in their current manual process. Talking with them directly will be very helpful in designing as we would know from those users the needs that they really acquire. So their voice should be heard and may it be an essential basis for designing our system. And thirdly, we have to watch them. How they respond when there is a pressure doing some deadlines, suffering from complex methods, using the manual process. Sometimes, watching how they do their work speaks louder than they uh, say it. Okay? Because sometimes, they really can't express the exact words they would like to tell us during interviews. So it is better to also watch how they do the manual process of their work. Next, how to define terms that we gathered. So we must take it one by one. What problems have you gathered? Have you observed? Based on those problems, can you now visualize what to systematize? Okay. So next, we should define also who are our users. Were your perceptions target the users? Okay. And after that, we should define the solution according to our client's needs. The development should be designed according to how we could solve the existing problems. And after defining all the needed matters, it's time to ide ideate the data. As an individual, okay, what was your point of view? Will that be helpful to share it with your team? And as each member share their ideas, it's time to perform abstraction to understand the data better and plan how to merge those ideas to get a linear path as synergies imply. After emerging all the ideas, the team will now come up with a solution to resolve the problem. And after plotting the solution, we may now perform prototyping. So we should not limit our ideas when doing a prototype. As long as we can, we should provide options. If there are options, we may select the best or emerge good ideas from each option. Then, we may now build the first version of the system ready to be implemented. And again, in testing, okay, we do it first in our team, then let our sample users use it and observe its functionality. If there are recommendations or if something is wrong or if there appears to be an error, we should start again the stages that we've come through until we develop the fully functional, efficient, and effective version of our system. So to summarize it all, Design thinking and design stages means a repeatable process that offers a structural design to enhance problem solving, to resolve, and give solutions that will make our users satisfied. And here ends my lecture, and I hope that I have shared to you a lot and you've learned something. Thank you so much for listening, and God bless everyone.